Hello, hello. Welcome to our Monday story time. Yes, Black Story Time here at Bates Memorial 3D Ministry. I am Yolanda and I am here to read another African American book. And it's a good one. Yes, it is. Anybody know about Motown? Yes, Motown, Barry Gordy, The Supremes. I got you today. Yes. Great book, one of my love, which I love all the books I've read and shared with you guys. So let us get ready so that we can get started and read. We are Supremes. Yes, you see that? We are Supremes. And We Are Supreme, it is written by Zoe Tucker and it's illustrated by Shalene, Shalene Perner. Let us read the book, We Are Supreme. Mary was excited today. Mary was excited. Today was the high school talent show and she couldn't wait to sing. During her performance, she sang her heart out. Mary loved music and being on stage was such a thrill. Mary watched the other performers. Florence was up next. She had the sweetest voice Mary had ever heard. After the show, Mary and Flo walked home together. They both lived on the east side of Detroit in a big community called the Brewster Douglas Housing Project. The people who lived there were like one big family and everyone looked after each other. The girls' friendship grew as they spent all their time together, singing along to records and practicing their dance moves. One day, Flo and Mary heard about an all-male group called the Primes, who were looking for an all-girl group to sing with. They decided to audition. Another girl who lived across the street auditioned too. Her name was Diana. Together, they were sensational. They became the Prime Nets, the newest girls group on the block. Being together was great fun and they each brought something special to the group. Flo was strong and clever. Mary was fun and bubbly. And Diana was friendly and confident. Soon the primates began performing at local parties and clubs. Detroit was famous for its big cars, factories, not to mention its cool music scenes. The girls always dressed to impress the movers and shakers of Motor City. Sometimes they sang with a fourth singer, first a girl called Betty, and then later a girl called Barbara. But Mary, Flo, and Diana was the heart and soul of the group.
they rocked and bopped at sock hops all over town. A sock hop is just what it sounds like. A dance where people kicked off their shoes and danced and hopped around in their socks. The girls sound so good. A friend suggested they audition for Motown Records, the most famous record company in the world city. In the whole city. At the time, black musicians didn't have the same opportunities and rights as white musicians. It was very frustrating and unfair, but Motown Record was a black-owned record company that was very successful. They were helping lots of black musicians become pop stars. It was a big deal. The manager of Motown was a man called Barry Gardy. He found the sharpest, coolest, funkiest artist in town. He was tough, but he knew his stuff. Mary, Flo, and Diana was desperate to be part of the scene. At the audition, with hearts hammering and butterflies in their stomachs, they sang their favorite song. Barry loved their sound, but he said he thought the girls were too young and they needed to finish high school first. They felt really sad and frustrated, but it made them even more determined to be six, to succeed. For the next year, the girls worked really hard. They finished their schoolwork and practiced their music. Mary taught them new dance moves, and Flo made sure they were all in perfect harmony. Diana designed and made all their outfits, and together they became stronger and more polished than ever before. Finally, their hard work paid off. In 1961, Barry Gardy signed them to Motown Records, but only on one condition, that they choose a new name. All the different names were mixed up, and Flo was given the tricky task of picking. She chose the Supremes, but Diana and Mary hated the new name, and the three girls had a big fight. Then they realized their shared dreams was much more important than their silly squabble, and they quickly made up as all good friends do. Before the Supremes became superstars, they performed all over America. 
and their music was played and loved all over the world and beyond. Their first number one hit, Where Did Our Love Go?, was played to the crew of Gemini. Five as they orbit the earth. The Supreme became much more than the best girls group in the world. They became a symbol of the changing time in America and people of all colors and nationality idolized them. It's amazing what you can do with your friends. wonderful book wasn't it yes i enjoyed it and maybe this is one of your books you want to purchase to be able to start your black uh african library and build to it as well so we want to continue to encourage you all please purchase and support our african-american illustrators and writers uh, my previous books that i've already read was uh, little sister wipe the slate clean which was a great book for those that were starting back to school bullying and children that are shovy and kind of do things that is not nice very very great book parents to uh, purchase and read um, with your children your grandchildren as well also um, my nana and me which is a great book we talked about what different names that we call our grandparents so we had a wonderful time reading that as the little girl uh, spent time with her nana so until next time we hope that you all stay safe and be with us on next monday uh, for our next black story time you take care and be safe and i look forward to seeing you